I was preparing to go to graduate school when Rachel was killed, and I spent uh, the bulk of my time in graduate school following Craig and Cindy's journey into the cavernous world of the Israeli military and legal system. Um, and I, I followed it since. And if you had told me that when I first started reading about uh, Rachel and her parents, that I would be standing up here uh, as, as part of this commemoration, I would be very happy. So I, I'm uh, very honored to be here. I moved uh, up here with my wife, uh, Layla, uh, from Arkansas. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm very honored to be able to address you. Uh, you've heard from some pretty extraordinary people so far, and I don't have a lot that I could add to some of the incredible voices and stories we've heard. I can tell you from my own experiences, my own family's experiences, uh, that there are two very different forms uh, of occupation and violence, uh, just like uh, Alyssa was uh, alluding to. Um, my uncle was sitting down having dinner with his children when an Israeli missile fell on their house uh, and killed them. <clears throat> and that's a form of violence that is uh, extraordinarily scarring. Uh, but for example, another uncle of mine, Imad, he's a farmer in the West Bank. Uh, and there's a more insidious form uh, of violence, of occupation, of suppression. Uh, he'll move his produce through the, try to move it across borders, and of course it sits uh, arbitrarily stopped, uh, and it'll rot there in the sun as a form of humiliation, essentially. Uh, it's a, a way to exert power, exert control, uh, to show force. And that's the kind, you know, c contrasting these various forms of oppression uh, and systematic dehumanization that I feel like is just as important to address uh, as the extraordinary violence that we see going on from conflict to conflict. Um, I would say that anyone who asks you to defend your position, how dare you defend uh, people that would rise up against this uh, valuable ally of the United States, I would only suggest that you ask, well, how long would you live under occupation? Uh, how long would you tolerate a life like that? And just let them sit there and, and consider it. How long would you suffer a foreign military occupation? We're talking about people's lives at borders uh, being held hostage by 18-year-olds with machine guns. Right? Some kid from Ohio moves with his family to Hebron or wherever. And now they're in control of a family's livelihood that has been at stake for a long time. Uh, and if you can find justice in that, good luck. Uh, and that's the question that I would ask. How long would you tolerate such a system? Um, so uh, I appreciate everyone's attention, uh, and um, I'm really happy to see so many people here. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you.